Hi, Dick Rochford here. I've been getting questions about uh, generic altitudes to be flown or some rules of thumb with respect to what altitude to be flown. And this is a valid question for piston and or turbine aircraft. Different, uh, slightly different model, but valid question either way. In this case, uh, the plan is to fly from Cincinnati to Charlestown, West Virginia. And uh, there's some weather, a line of weather along the route. And uh, it's kind of a short flight. It's only uh, 45 minutes. So that would, uh, using the rule of thumb, the rule of thirds, we would only want to climb for one third of that flight time. And in the piston airplane, we'd only want to climb at 500 feet a minute on average. I know the aircraft will climb faster than that, but this is a rule of thumb just to get us in the ballpark. That would put us in the eight to 12,000 range for a flight from Cincinnati uh, to Charlestown. Now then, uh, that, that may or may not be an appropriate altitude, but that's a starting place. The next question is, what, uh, what are we trying to avoid on that route? And I would argue that would be rain moisture in this case and icing and possibly thunderstorms although that's a tactical tool issue dealt with the uh, radar and just looking at this line of weather i i would suggest that there is enough room to get around the events here producing lightning but it can't be considered uh, specifically uh, at this point in the planning this is strategic uh, strictly a strategic uh, plan here all right, so let, let's say we've chosen 11,000 for the flight. How do we know about ice and turbulence? Well, the old way was to look at imagery, to look at max icing potential, and then to flick through here with the Java tool and try to figure out where 11,000 is, get the right timestamp on it, and, uh, and, and go that way with it. So here's 13, there's 11 there. And accordingly, there's no ice in, in the vicinity that we're concerned about. But remember, um, this is uh, a, a somewhat of an, a, an, a, an adaptation of an of a otherwise excellent product. Back to the map now, we have another way to do this. And that is with the same data, which is now in the profile view of the, uh, of the flight plan. And now the Layers tab on the Profile view is a separate Layers tab from the one for the, the horizontal map. I have turned on Icing US and Turbulence US, and you see that at 11, we're uh, above the, the severe turbulence and um, uh, below the icing. Now, the severe turbulence is most likely being produced with uh, or by uh, this event right here and of course with the uh, radar we'll be able to see that rain as we get closer and avoid that finger of weather probably going uh, to the northeast around that but again this is moving west east so that's uh, a, a problem to be uh, solved as we progress across the line with the color weather radar a couple of points about this this strategy is we should never, ever use airmet icing information for this sort of planning. Airmets are six-hour smears. They're, they're not legitimate. Uh, they're designed to keep VFR traffic clear of, com completely clear of big areas of potential icing and aren't, are not appropriate at all for a Fiki-equipped aircraft uh, trying to uh, avoid ice. My rule for ice in the PA-46 is never intentionally in uh, encounter or plan to encounter anything more than light ice. And with this plan, we've done that. And then with respect to uh, uh, lightning, uh, never uh, get within 25 miles of a product or of an event producing lightning. And if uh, you're able to estimate tops uh, understand that if it's tops to 40, you should consider staying 40 miles away, and so on. 
This is Dick Rochford. Fly safely. Train often. <laughs>